Hi, you are welcome to this online worship brought to you by St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Burlington, Ontario. This is the day of Pentecost. It is when we celebrate the coming of God's Spirit to us. It is when Jesus' promise of sending us a counselor and advocate, Jesus' representative, becomes a reality to the whole world. And it is also the anniversary of the early church beginning in the power of the Holy Spirit. At St. Paul's, we also celebrate on the last Sunday in May, the anniversary of the establishment of the church and what would become Burlington. I say what would become because it dates back to 1822, long before Burlington was a city. So this part of the church is 198 years old and still alive in Christ. Happy anniversary, church. Happy anniversary, St. Paul's. Woohoo! And today's theme is no worries. And I give you the royal wave, and I hope you're giving it back. Well, there was a long line at 7.45 a.m. at the grocery store that opened at 8 a.m. for seniors only. A young man came from the parking lot and tried to cut in at the front of the line but a lady waved him off with her cane. He returned and tried a second time. Two men stopped him and shooed him away. He came back a third time and said, if you people don't let me unlock the door, none of you will ever get in the shop. Well, thank you for supporting each other and your families and your neighbors throughout this time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Support is always available by calling me at 905-921-5667 or emailing me at stpaulsburlington at gmail.com. Prayer mail goes out on Mondays and Thursdays. Men's ministry meets by Zoom on Wednesdays at 9.30 a.m. and we are studying the book of Philippians. Your participation is always welcome. The next meet and greet will be this Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. That's June the 3rd. The link will be sent out on Monday. Session will meet this Wednesday, June 3rd by Zoom at 3 p.m. Thank you for your financial contributions to the life and work of St. Paul's Church. Difficult times for all the churches, but we can do it together with God's awesome help. To make arrangements, please contact Ron Gamble at 905-330-2909 or egamble at sympathico.ca. Holy Communion will be celebrated next Sunday. In our call to worship, I will read the light print and if you could respond with the darker print. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Stir in our hearts, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit. Our praise song is, Spirit of God, descend upon our hearts. Would you please sing along with Nicholas? Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. We knit from earth through all its pulses move. To my weakness, mighty as thou art, and make me lovely as I ought to love. I ask no dream, no prophet ecstasies, no sudden rending of the veil of clay. Oh, all thine own soul, heart and
and strength and mind. I see thy cross there, teach my heart to cling. Oh, let me seek thee, and oh, let me find. Teach me to feel that thou art always nigh. Teach me the struggles of the soul to bear, to check the rising doubt, the rebel sigh. Teach me the patience of unanswered prayer. of the heaven descended dove, my heart an altar and thy love the flame. Let us come in prayer together. Would you pray with me the following prayer? Loving God, made known to us as Father, Son, and Spirit, with tender kindness, you transform our lives with your presence. You turn weeping into laughter, sorrow into joy, and death into life. We come in adoration this day to worship you. We rest from our work and responsibilities. We set aside our distractions and activities to praise you for the beauty that fills your world and to enjoy our life in you. Holy One, source of our lives, we confess that we have not always listened for your Spirit's call. You call us to love our enemies, but we cling to animosity old and new. You call us to unity in the body of Christ, but we remain divided. You send us into the world to be witnesses, but we avoid opportunities to share our joy in Christ. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Hear us as we share with you the secrets of our hearts in this silence. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. God's generous love reaches out to embrace us. In Christ, we are forgiven and set free to begin again in the renewing power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God for this most generous gift. And now in the words that Jesus has taught us to pray, let us say together. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, in family time today, our question is, what is one of the first symbols or signs do you remember from the Bible? Well, if you were thinking of a rainbow, that is the one I was thinking of. Do you, do you remember the story of Noah and the ark and the great flood? You can read it in Genesis chapter seven through nine. Rainbows are a sign of God's promise after the great flood, where God will never destroy the earth by water again. 
Friday night, we were blessed with a bright rainbow at our house. Sometimes you only see one part of them, but this time it spanned from one side of the earth to the other, a complete covering. And then there was a double rainbow, a double reminder of God's faithfulness. Wow. There's another symbol or sign that represents the Holy Spirit. That's right, it is the dove. The dove of peace lets Noah know the flood was over. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, we are told the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. You see this picture of the blazing dove that represents the Holy Spirit? Still the dove of peace, and the Spirit still fulfills another promise of God. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be his representative, so that we would know that Jesus is always with us and walks with us in this journey of life. A reminder of God's faithfulness. Let's listen now to God speaking through his word. Let us pray. Spirit of God at Pentecost, you moved among the gathered disciples to create new understanding. Would you move among us this day to fill us with a fresh understanding of the scriptures? Energize us to act on this holy wisdom faithfully. In the name of Jesus Christ, the living word. Amen. Well, our first passage today is from the book of Acts, the story of the early church. So it's chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, and it's from the New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. The second passage is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, and again from the New Living Translation. This is a part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So the message today is entitled, No Worries. I want to take you back to Moses when he prayed in Numbers 11, verse 29. He said, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Something that came true on Pentecost for all of God's believers. As we read in Acts 2, verses 1 to 4, God's Holy Spirit came upon the apostles in the form of fire. 
This was not a fire of destruction, but a symbol of God's purifying love and blessing. The Holy Spirit, when it comes upon you, takes you from confusion about Jesus to clarity, from ignorance to repentance, from darkness to light, and from worrying to peace. On that day of Pentecost, God, through the empowered apostles, trained believers from all nations for faith, obedience, and ministry. And that is still true today. The Spirit's ongoing work in people today is why Scripture penetrates the soul. Faith in Jesus springs to life and his followers speak with authority about him. This is our advocate, Jesus' representative to us his promise fulfilled from John 14, verses 15 to 17. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him, because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Did you notice how Jesus said another advocate? Jesus is the best advocate that we could ever have. His examples, his teachings, his compassion, his healing, his redeeming are all well above what we could hope for or ever conceive as possible. And yet he did it for us. So when he says another advocate, we can trust the Spirit acts on Jesus' behalf and can do all that Jesus did when Jesus walked with us. This shows us that Jesus has never left us. The Spirit has always been present. In Genesis, we see the Spirit hovering over the waters, waiting for the word to be spoken so that creation could happen. Throughout the Old Testament, we see the Holy Spirit coming upon people episodically for a moment when something extraordinary could be accomplished. Now, Jesus promises that will continue, but also now the Holy Spirit would live within us. Not only when we need to do something we have no strength or courage for, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and empowers us to do what we cannot do on our own. But also now as believers, we have the Holy Spirit in us so that Jesus is with us at all times. Not just episodically or from time to time, but bringing his peace to us wherever we are, no matter what is happening to us or about us, even in pandemics. So when Jesus was teaching in the Sermon on the Mount in the Good News according to Matthew, Jesus knew that you and I would have times of anxiety and worry. His message was not just for those original listeners, but for all believers through all time. It is for us right now. Jesus let us know that God our Creator knows us, supports us, and supplies our needs. Then he asks this question that cuts to the core. Why do you have so little faith? Jesus knew that the answer was for him to be with us, always encouraging, always building, always helping. And so one aspect of God's big plan was to make that possible by having the Holy Spirit live within us every moment every day. We often wish we could see what lies around the corner in life, then we could prepare for it, even control it. A wise person said, although we cannot see around corners, God can. One day a 10-year-old was boiling eggs with their grandfather. They both wondered as they looked at the boiling water how long it would take to get the eggs just right. The 10-year-old said, too bad we can't open them up and see how they are doing. The grandfather agreed, but said that would spoil the egg. 
They began to talk about other things that they could not see, like tomorrow. Too bad they could not just crack tomorrow open to see if it was just the way they would like it to be. Both agreed that meddling with tomorrow, just like the egg, would spoil both today and tomorrow. But you see, Jesus has promised to care for us every day, even tomorrow, so we can live by faith. Ralph Easter had driven from Calgary to Banff in the foothills of the Rockies many times, but it was the first time that had the greatest impact on him. The snow-capped peaks looked so high and impenetrable, an insurmountable barrier. He began to be anxious about how the highway would traverse such a barrier, but he drove on. Finally, he reached a point where it looked like the road would stop. Then he came to a sharp bend in the road and the highway stretched on as before. Many of those turns progressed him upward and forward until he came to the other side of the mountain range. What seemed impassable was now doable. As we travel this journey of life, many obstacles will loom in front of us. But as we keep traveling on in faith, God opens a new way for us. Ralph now travels that same road with peace because he trusts the way. We can travel any road placed in front of us because we know God knows the way and the more we travel, the more trust we have, no matter what new obstacles may seem to loom ahead. As a follower of Christ, we can find a lot to worry about these days. This pandemic has shined a spotlight on so many things we counted on as being solid and there for us. A new normal is an understatement. Too often we can be troubled by the constant news cycles and changing facts. We are on heightened alert about what others are doing. We also need to understand that Jesus covers all types of worries. You could hear an Australian saying, no worries, mate. And they are saying, think nothing of it. We are okay. Or a Jamaican saying, no worries, man. Everything will be handled. Don't worry. And I say today, no worries. God knows exactly what is around the bend today and tomorrow and God's plan is to be with you. Remember Jesus' promises? I will be with you always, and I will send an advocate just like me. Jean-Pierre de Cassaud uh, is quoted as saying, every day we can experience the peace of God when we stop stewing about what might be or what might have been and focus on what is. God with us. We cannot walk this road with the Lord if we are paralyzed with worry about the past and the future. We just can't. No wonder Jesus told us, do not worry, and sent his spirit to live within us and to come upon us whenever we need that extra help. If you're getting overwhelmed, then let's get together and figure out what is stopping you from feeling the peace of the heavenly descended dove, Jesus' spirit, our advocate today. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen and amen. Our song is Breathe On Me, Breath of God. Would you please sing along with Nicholas?
until my will is one with thine to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I Let us come in prayer today for those who cannot or will not be able to pray for themselves. Our intercessions today, O oh Lord, are for those who are grieving losses, whether it be from the COVID-19 or through racism, through illness, or even violence. We know that there are people who are worried about the past, the future and today. We know there are people who are stewing in uncertainty. And Lord, we just pray for each and every one of them that they would be able to have the benefit of your Holy Spirit in them, that they would believe in you as their Savior and Lord and have that possibility become a reality. And Lord, we also want to come for those we love and would name now in our hearts. But we also want to come and pray for those who we don't even know their names, are not even sure that we can love them. We want to uplift all those who are uh, listed in our prayer mail and on our prayer wall to give thanksgiving for all those who are doing things in their community to help others, to be able to share with families, to keep in touch, to be able to know that they are making a difference and for those who we specifically name for the issues that they are dealing with, we, we seek your peace and your healing hand upon them all. And we pray that all this would be done through the revealing and healing power of your Holy Spirit. May it be true for them and may it be true for us. In the powerful and strong name of Jesus, amen. Pentecost celebrates the gifts of the Spirit poured out on the church, preparing Christ's followers to serve him in the world. So let us offer our gifts to God this day to build up the church, its ministry and mission wherever the Spirit leads. Be blessed and be a blessing. Let us give thanks in prayer. Would you say this with me? Spirit of grace and power, bless the gifts we bring today so that they accomplish surprising things in Jesus' name. We offer ourselves too so that our lives may proclaim the good news with your grace and power. Amen. 
Our closing praise song is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Please sing along with Nicholas. Spirit. 
wilderness calling and free spirit spirit of restlessness stir me from placidness wind wind on the sea in our sending forth would you please say these words with me all things are made new when we walk with the Spirit of God. Jesus is present with us through his Spirit. We celebrate this anniversary with many more to come. May you go in the peace of God's Spirit and God's love for you through the redeeming power of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen.